DEC is short for double ended queue. It is a sequence container with the possibility to access elements on both sides of the queue. So you can delete and add elements both at the beginning and at the end of the queue. Hi everyone, I decided to explain the complete STL. Over this course, we will start from the ground up and cover the complete STL. So if this is interesting to you, stay tuned and subscribe. And today we will cover the double-ended queue, so let's start. Declaring a double-ended queue requires you to include the specific header. The header for double-ended queue is named as the container itself, deck. So we include deck, and to declare it, we use the standard deck, and then we can specify the type. In this case, we just choose the integer, and then we just give it a name, for instance, my deck. And that's already it. Now we have declared our queue. Since it is a double-ended queue, it means that we can add elements on both sides of the queue. Therefore, we have two functions available to add elements. And one of them is um, push front and the other one is push back. So we have uh, my deck. And here I can choose push back to add an element at the end of the queue. So for instance, a two. Or I can also use push front and push front will now add the element at the beginning of the queue. So if I will out output my queue afterwards. I will see that a one is at the beginning of the queue and the two is at the end of the queue. Let's head over to the console and here we can just use the compiler to compile our program and the result will then be stored in main and afterwards we can use main to execute it and we see that we output a one and a two exactly at the position where we expect. Additionally to having push front and push back, you can also use mplace to construct the elements directly in the queue by using my deck dot mplace and or M place front and M place back. But uh, if this is a queue which only stores integer, it doesn't really make a difference. But if you have a more complex class here, you can qu save quite some time by constructing the element directly in the queue. Removing elements from the queue is exactly the same as adding them. You can remove elements from the beginning and from the end since it's, since it's a double-ended queue. You can do this by using the pop function and in this case it's either pop back or pop front. We have both possibilities here and we can use once pop back and the other one pop front. And we will end then with the queue which only has a single element in it left. But to verify that, we will output it again and head over to, con to the console to compile it and output what we expect. So starting the program, we see that at this place it still has 1, 1, 2. And then it only has the middle element because we pop the one from the front and we pop the one from the back, which leaves us just with the middle one left. As all containers in the standard template library, you can also um, use iterators to access elements of the container. So for instance, you can insert stuff or erase stuff by using the iterator functions. To generate an iterator for, the, uh, for accessing elements of the queue, you can choose, for instance, auto iterator. And here we choose the beginning of the queue by using my deck dot um, begin and this will now give us an iterator to the first element of the queue. Now we can use this to insert also elements so we can use something like my deck dot insert and here it requires us to pass the iterator and then the element that we want to insert at the specific point for instance a free and if we head over to the console and compile this we will see that at this point we had a one left in our uh, deck and if we run it and then obviously we also need to output it um, 
then we will see that we have also now a free additionally in our list or in our um, queue. So we see that we have inserted here free and we have inserted it at the beginning of the list. We can do the same for deletion. So we can do the same again, for instance, declaring a second iterator, which accesses also the begin. And then we can use the erase functionality to erase the first element that is at iterator two. In this case, we don't need to pass a value because it's just erasing the element. And after erasing the first element, we will end up with the one again. But again, I need to output it to see what we end up with. And let's compile the program. And then we will see only a one is left in the queue. So we see it at the, we use the begin iterator to add an element at the front. And then we remove the same element again by using an iterator. Since queues are also dynamically sized, it means that their storage is uh, limited and you don't know how much memory they take. Uh, you also have the size functions in the queue, which means that you can access how big it currently is by using um, the dot size method. And if we now output the size of this deck, um, we will get how much it currently is taking up in memory and it's useful if you also want to traverse it in a loop that you know the size of how many elements are currently stored and we see that uh, there is one inside um, the queue and the size of the queue therefore also is one. There's not really much more to say about queue. So double-ended queues are very similar to vectors with the only difference that you can also um, add and delete elements directly off on the front of the queue. Uh, in terms of memory, it's not guaranteed that the queue is also continuous in memory. So this is a difference to vector. So if you rely, for instance, on caching in your applications, it's something that you need to consider that it can be that the elements that are stored in the queue are a little bit stretched out over memory and not really continuous, as is this were the case with most of the other containers. So be careful if you want to rely on something like caching. Thanks for joining me today. As always, check out the code from GitHub and get started yourself. Um, if you don't know what to learn next, I have here already a video that will suit your needs. And as always, happy coding.